Oprah apparently needs to run for president. Logan Paul makes a deadly career move, and everyone that immigrates here is from a hole. Let's unpack it in this week's episode of Modern Rebels. Okay, so welcome to episode number one of Modern Rebels. I'm Adam, and I'll be your host. So basically, we're just going to talk about the events of the past week and kind of mull through them. So let's go. So from Monday, Oprah gave a speech at the Golden Globes after receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award, which honestly, she does deserve. Let's let's be honest there. She's probably the most famous woman in media. She's come from really humble beginnings. So good for her. I'm glad that she's got it. That being said, it was filled with a whole bunch of leftist garbage. From that leftist garbage, there's really one clip that stands out to me. And I'll go ahead and play it for you here. Which brings me to this. What I know for sure is that speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. And I'm especially proud and inspired by all the women who have felt strong enough and empowered enough to speak up and share their personal stories. Each of us in this room. Okay, so speaking your truth. This is wrong on so many levels. The reason it is not good to speak your truth is because there is no such thing as your truth. There is truth, and that's it. Now, there are, granted, are subjective ways that we view events, but the truth stays the same. And when we try to say that we should speak our truth, what you're really saying is lie. And that's not good. This devalues the culture so much, so much. And I really, I can't believe, I mean, I can believe that she said this, but it's just utterly ridiculous. And she's being kind of torn up a wall for, for some of these comments, but at least by conservative media. So really what it comes to is, like I said, your subjective version of reality. And that is not necessarily what the truth is. Each of us can view an event in a different way, a different light, but that's not necessarily going to reflect what the truth is and what really happened. And so we can kind of see this in these kangaroo courts on college campuses where women can come up and say, oh, he raped me, and there's no due process for these men in these kangaroo courts. So they end up getting kicked out of school when in reality they didn't even touch these women. Sure, some of these uh, allegations can be credible, but some of them are not, and we've seen a decent amount of them that are not, and there's no due process. So this is an issue for Oprah calling for women to speak their truths. It's just, it's really gross and disgusting, and it doesn't reflect anything that we need to be doing in the United States right now. Now, speaking of things that devalue the culture, on Tuesday, Logan Paul, a famous YouTube star, former famous Vine star, he moved to YouTube, got way more famous. Um, His main platform is to kids under 12. He posted a video on YouTube, uh, one of his daily vlogs of him and his friends going into the Japanese suicide forest, where it's very well known that people go in there to commit suicide all the time. So they go in and they actually find a dead body and they film it and then proceed to joke about it, laugh about it, and put it on YouTube, and then YouTube put it at number 10 on trending. So millions of people saw this, and then there was finally a backlash about it, and Logan Paul ended up taking it down and apologizing. Now, there are a lot of people that are calling for his channel to be either removed from him completely, or his YouTube Red series completely removed from him. I don't know necessarily how I feel about all of that. The argument for removing his channel from him is about how he's actually committed three different strikes against the YouTube guidelines, and so he should have his channel taken away from him, but YouTube never gave him those strikes. I can see the validity in that argument. I don't know about, you know, taking his YouTube Red series away from him. This is a, a, obviously a gross mistake, and I'll play the clip for you because I, I think it shows a lot about the character of Logan Paul and, and how he's just not a good person. But... That being said, I don't think YouTube's actually taking away his YouTube red stuff. I think they're going to kind of simmer on it for a little bit. But here's the clips that I think are just really disgusting and display how him and his friends are just really not good people. Um, I really hate to say this. I think there's someone hanging right there. Excuse me? (laughs) But this is the thing. This is a thing that is now in our lives. We just experienced. How our lives unfold. There's no going back. I've seen things I can't unsee. We found a dead body. Yeah. What the fuck? So I think that really just shows the character of 
Logan and his friends. Now, suicide is a serious issue, and it's not to be joked about, and if you need help, seriously, go out and seek it. And we've made, like, we can make edgy jokes about that kind of stuff, but seriously, if you need help, someone, someone out there likes you, someone out there definitely loves you and wants you around, so if you need help, please go and find some. Now, everyone, I understand, deals with grief in different kind of ways, but frankly, in the end, I just think their entire reaction is disgusting. Okay, and Wednesday, President Trump held a bipartisan meeting with members of Congress about DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Now, this could have been a very productive meeting, but President Trump said some things that I really don't like or agree with, mainly this clip right here um, that I'll go ahead and play for you. Us ...not to get this done. And Chuck, I will say, when this group comes back, hopefully with an agreement, this group and others from the Senate, from the House, comes back with an agreement, I'm signing it. I mean, I will be signing it. I'm not going to say, oh, gee, I want this or I want that. I'll be signing it because I have a lot of confidence in the people in this room. I don't care what they come back with. I don't care if it doesn't have what I want. I'll sign it. That's an issue. That's a big issue, especially if you're in the Trump base, which I'm not personally. I didn't vote for him. But people like Ann Coulter, who wrote in Trump We Trust, Ann was throwing, throwing him up and down the flagpole for this. This is a... Uh, frankly, a gross negligence on, on his part, just because you want to get something through, you have the veto power. You you can not sign it. Now, I believe that they've come back to him and he actually didn't end up signing it, but still saying stuff like that, that's, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. And, and it takes away all the leverage that you want for the wall. Like, oh, I don't care if the wall stuff is in there. I'll sign it anyway. That's just dumb. That's just so dumb. And it betrays his base. And Frankly, I'm not going to be surprised if he loses a few popularity points over that. Also on Wednesday, we found out that Steve Bannon is kicked out from Breitbart or stepped down, whatever you may think actually happened. Um, I like to believe that he was kicked out. Frankly, Steve Bannon was not a good person. He made Breitbart into a platform for the alt-right, and he used it as his own political tool. And frankly, it was disgusting. And that's not what Andrew Breitbart wanted Breitbart to be. And that really sullies his name. Apparently, the Mercers have also stopped being in contact with him since November, and I guess the final nail in Steve's coffin was when Trump said he's got nothing to do with my presidency. Anyway, I'm really happy the Bannon's out from Breitbart. Uh, I think it's I think it's good. Then on Thursday, James O'Keefe came out with a new video for Project Veritas. It's from an interview with a former Twitter employee saying that they actually shadow ban things that they don't like. So shadow banning is essentially saying oh, you're not technically banned, but no one can see what you're tweeting. So you're not getting anyone engaging with your stuff. And the reason for that is because no one's actually seeing it. They're not putting it in the feed of anyone. So that's really scary in the kind of free speech world. Of course, Twitter can do whatever they like. They are a private company. But you can't tout yourself as a platform of free speech and then continue to censor people like that. It's really unethical. And I want to see someone actually create a platform that would rival Twitter, that would rival YouTube, that would actually be a platform for complete free speech where people can voice their opinions, whether you think they're right or wrong. That's the best way to go. Twitter needs to either change what they're doing or someone is going to eventually figure that out. But anyway, here's a bit of the clip from that Project Veritas video. One strategy is to shadow ban so that you have ultimate control. The idea of a shadow ban is that you ban someone, but they don't know they've been banned because they keep posting, but no one sees their content. So they just think that no one's engaging with their content when in reality, no one's seeing it. You just sort of turn off all of the features for them. So like, they still see everything, it's all there. You can like it, you can favorite it, or you can like retweet or whatever. But uh, at the end of the day, no one else interacts with your, no one else sees what you're doing. So. Uh, all that data is just thrown away. Uh, it's risky, though. So that happened. Um, also on Thursday, Professor Steven Pinker from Harvard University, uh, the psychology department, who is not right-wing in any sense of the word. He's actually pretty left. But he came out in a panel and said that if people don't hear facts on college campuses and we stifle those facts, then when they hear them, they could be turned to the alt-right radicalism. And he's honestly right. He goes ahead and states a few of these facts, like women had different preferences than men when it comes to types of work, uh, capitalism is better than communism, 
pretty obvious stuff, but the stuff that the left has sort of tried to devalue and take away from us saying. And it all kind of comes back to we need to be able to agree upon a truth, not our own subjective version of it, but a truth. And when people are prevented from hearing the truth and then they hear it, it can be a radicalizing kind of thing. Um, so I will go ahead and play a couple clips from that, but I highly recommend you go and check out you know, more of it. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. When they are exposed to the first time to true statements that have never been voiced in college campuses or in the New York Times or in respectable media, uh, that are almost like a bacillus to which they have no uh, immunity. And they are immediately infected with both a feeling of outrage that these truths uh, are unsayable uh, and no defense against uh, uh, taking them to what we might consider to be rather repellent conclusions. Okay, and then on Friday, boy, oh boy, on Friday, it came out from Senator Dick Durbin uh, from Illinois that apparently during the DACA bipartisan meeting, uh, Trump said, Trump said, why do we have so many people immigrating here from whole countries? Now, if Trump said this, it's not good. Regardless of what way you want to interpret it, if he said it, it is not good. Not good. Not presidential, and it's and it, it's disgusting. It's really bad. But apparently Senator Dick Durbin doesn't have the best track record when it comes to telling the truth about stuff behind closed doors. And many Republicans in the meeting are saying that they don't remember Trump saying this. Now, if Trump said this, it's important to kind of look at how it could be interpreted. It could be interpreted as he's saying that they're shithole people from shithole countries and that they don't need to be here. I don't want them here which would be the racist version that the left wants you to believe. Or there's the other way of looking at it, which is the way I like to look at it. He's saying that countries are lesser than the United States, which I'm sure we can all agree that to an extent that's true with a lot of different countries. I mean, I don't want to be in North Korea. And people in North Korea don't want to be in North Korea. They move south and get shot at if they try to defect. Some countries are worse off than the United States. Do I think that the president needs to be using that kind of language? No, absolutely not. And there is evidence to kind of point to if the president said this, he actually meant that, you know, some countries are lesser and that he's not actually being racist. Uh, there's a clip from Rand Paul on NBC that I'll play for you right now. You know, I don't think the comments were constructive at all, but I also think that to be fair, we shouldn't draw conclusions that he didn't intend. I know personally about his feelings towards Haiti and towards Central America because when I was not a candidate for president and he wasn't a candidate for president, I went down there on a medical mission trip. I did about 200 cataract surgeries with a group of surgeons in Haiti and the same in Central America. And when we asked Donald J. Trump as a private citizen to support those trips, he was a large uh, financial backer of both medical mission trips. So I think it's unfair to sort of draw conclusions from a remark that I think wasn't constructive is the least we can say. And I think it's unfair then to sort of all of a sudden paint him, oh, well, he's a racist, when I know for a fact that he cares uh, very deeply about the people in Haiti because he helped to finance a trip where we were get, able to get vision back for 200 people in Haiti. I guess so. So good stuff from Rand Paul, as always. And then there was this other tweet from Larry Elder that I found really humorous. Um, it's a picture of... Donald Trump in 1986, standing next to Rosa Parks, actually, receiving the Diversity and Tolerance Award. So that's pretty funny. So anyway, we move on to Saturday, and Saturday was a big to-do in Hawaii when a government employee in Hawaii pressed the wrong button and sent the entire state into a panic, believing that they were about to be nuked from intercontinental ballistic missiles in about 10 minutes. Uh, there were parents putting their kids in storm drains and sewers. It was pretty sad, but it all turned out to be a false alarm. Um, thankfully it was a false alarm, but the employee wasn't actually fired. Even they just got demoted. So it shows you the incompetence of the Hawaiian government. But regardless, people were somehow blaming this on Trump saying that it was his fault, which I can understand, you know, Trump provoking Kim Jong-un saying, oh, you know, little rocket man, stuff like that, uh, which is dumb, which is dumb. But this this was ultimately just a, a problem on the state level, and it had nothing to do with Trump. And Jim Carrey tweeted out uh, this tweet saying that he woke up in the morning and uh, he had 10 minutes to live. Luckily, it was a false alarm, um, but it was a real psychic warning that if we allow... Uh, <laughs> this one man Gamora and his corrupt Republican Congress to continue alienating the world, we're headed for suffering. Dude, get off your high horse. 
get off of your high horse, okay? This was a state-level mess-up. That's it. It was just a state-level mess-up. That's all. That's it, and that's all. So, frankly, I think the man should have been fired for doing that big of a mess-up. But, yeah, ultimately, it wasn't Trump's fault. Okay, and then finally we come to Sunday. So, the Wall Street Journal put out an article saying that Trump said he was in good relations with Kim Jong-un, and then the White House came out with a clip of the same interview saying that that Trump never actually said that he was friendly with Kim Jong-un. He said he would be friendly with Kim Jong-un. So I'll go ahead and play that clip and let you guys be the judge. But frankly, I think it's a case of the Mandela effect where it's kind of hard to tell. I lean to the side of it, of him saying, you know, I would be instead of I am. But once again, you guys can draw your own conclusion on that. As you know, I have a great relationship with Prime Minister Abe, Japan. Uh... And I probably have a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And I probably have a good relationship, and I'd probably have a good relationship. When you take a look at the linguistics of it, it's kind of hard to tell. But like I said, I think he said I, I'd, I would, but that's still up for kind of speculation. I don't understand why we want to have good relationships with dictators like Putin and uh, Kim Jong-un anyway. At a, at a certain level, maybe I can understand it, but these people are civil rights violators and they're just not good people. They don't believe in true Republican democracy and they're not forces for good in the world, unlike the United States. But anyway, that's this week in a recap. So uh, we'll see you guys next week. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at the Modern Rebels Podcast or on YouTube. Please go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you like and comment and stuff like that. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, I believe that's it. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye.